Good morning, friends. I'm Sandra Clay. This is I'm the pastor at Cook's United Methodist Church. This is our patio. Uh, it's a holy place uh, for me, not just because I get to join with you um, here when we can share our thoughts and our um, prayers, our wonderings, our frustrations. Well, we can share everything here. And those of you who are used to joining us, good morning, Miss Amy. Uh, good morning, Stacy. Those of you who, like Amy and Stacy, join us on a regular basis already know we find a, a lot of comfort um, in gathering uh, together. So if you're new to us, uh, this is a safe place for you to be able to celebrate, uh, to ask us to do that with you, to pray, um, and to ask us to do that with you. So um, we're so glad uh, to be with you. Today we've been talking a little bit about uh, love. What prompted me was um, a family uh, wedding uh, where there was love of so uh, many kinds, variations, depths. Um, this past weekend, what a joy it was for all of us, I think, who were uh, involved. Um, but I got to thinking as we read that beautiful passage from Paul uh, in 1 Corinthians 13 um, about the original intent of that message was not uh, just for weddings. It wasn't even a to address a wedding. It was about um, a people who were committed to following Jesus uh, to do so, though that's not the instruction or the invitation they grew up with, uh, and it was not um, instruction or invitation that most of the folks that they considered neighbors would have understood either. Mm. And so let me remind us of that passage. Uh, then I'm going to, oops, I'm sorry for shaking the table today. I'm going to remind us of the passage, uh, let you listen. We've, we've uh, looked at the New International Version, uh, the message translation. And now this is um, uh, the New Revised Standard uh, translation of Scripture. Uh, very little difference between uh, any of them, and it's all based on vernacular, uh, not um, taking license with the original languages. And when I read um, this, then I'm going to go back and re recap what we've done so far and challenge us to think about how we are love. So here we go, chapter 13 of Paul's first letter to the Christians who lived at Corinth, the Corinthians. And I'm reading verses 1 through the first half of verse 8, and then again verse 13. Let's listen for God's word for us today. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries, all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And now faith, hope, and love abide these three. And the greatest of them is love. We talked um, on Monday about uh, that word love. You know, the Greek language, the original language of the New Testament has so many words for love. Each one of them very particular uh, in um, the way love is exchanged or uh, between the parties 
that that exchange uh, happens. But it is very clear that in Paul's letter, his reference to love always is agape love. And it's easier, we talked about on Tuesday, how it's easier for us to always say, mm, that's not love. Because of the way it feels, because of the way it comes to us, uh, we know because of how it does or does not help us become our best. We also discovered, though, that to, to refer to an action as love is a little short-sighted because it is the person from whom that action originates that is truly characterized by that word or not. Uh, and because we know that God is love, not just that God loves, but that God is love, then we are called to be the same. And God's not going to ask us to do something that we are not capable of doing. I, I did not say that we had to do it on our own. God doesn't ask that we do it on our own. But look at how easy, well, I say it's easy. What I mean is it's going to be simple. But it is oh so hard for us to choose not just to love in the moment, but to be love, which will mean our identity in every moment is this, love. Uh, God is love, so those we are created in the image of God, we are love. This is how simple, though, that it begins for us. I think there are three things that we've got to do. One is to choose to think the best of the other. Ch choose right now, not just because it's easy or because you want to, but choose right now to think the very best, not the worst. That's based on suspicion. It's based on, uh, based on perspective. It may be based on past experience, but it keeps us rooted somewhere else instead of in the hope for each of God's children to be their very best. So when we begin to assume the best of other people, she didn't mean to, uh, what I, here's an example, is when somebody who's having a bad day uh, answers a legitimate question with a legitimate answer, but there's a little bit of snip in the voice, of course, we assume the worst, that that's exactly what that person meant, was to put us in our place. What if in that moment and in every moment, you chose, I choose, to think the best of that person? I'm just gonna tell you the first place that makes a difference for me is in line in traffic and in line at Target. Mm-hmm. What about for you? Do you always assume the best of the other person? And I, I don't think it's just strangers that we're trying to negotiate uh, life and proximity with. I think it's so easy for us to stop talking about the most important things and we just assume we know somebody's intent and their mindset, even in our families. The first thing for us to do if we are going to be love is to assume the best, to think the best of the other person. Now, I wanna put a kind of a, a, a side remark here. Sometimes uh, the person that we give the most junk to is ourselves. And so maybe you're one of those who needs to assume the best, to think the best of yourself. I read yesterday um, uh, in some journal remarks from a, a good friend, she shared those with me, is that um, when you aren't hearing from another person, what you long to hear, that add a boy or that add a girl or those encouraging words that you can do this, you can keep on doing this. Belly up to the mirror. 
belly up to the mirror and tell yourself what you need to hear. Stop waiting for somebody else to do it for you. God has trusted you with you when nobody else will be ultimately responsible for you now that you've grown it is time for us to take responsibility for ourselves especially when we're not hearing from those around us what would be a voice of encouragement think the best of yourselves my friends and then you will do the best for yourself as yourself so think the best of the other because you think the best of self second thing for us to do is to do our best for the other and to do our best for ourselves not just waiting for somebody else to come and save the day we can do hard things that's become a normalized statement and i don't even remember who i heard it from first but it is true not only can we, um, we should, we must do hard things. Life is hard sometimes. So thinking the best of others, doing the best for ourselves. So, oh, let me say a word about this too. Is the, uh, this world has um, a sliding definition of what perfection is. And that's not what I'm talking about doing our best for or outdoing that quickly because we live in a competitive um, environment uh, in many, many ways. Um, I don't mean to best another person, to know yourself, know what you're capable of, trust God for something even more, and then do your best. Think the best of other people, do the best for yourself, because of yourself, uh, not comparing yourself to another person, but knowing yourself well enough and committing yourself to do exactly what you're able to do. And because those two things are never going to be enough in loving another person, we trust God for the gap. Uh, what I mean is um, we we always give love in the way that most often, uh, I don't want to put an uh, absolute on it, but most often we um, offer love, we give love in the way we can best receive it. And so when we've done our best to try to move beyond that, we think the best of another person, we're gonna do the best for ourselves, for them. Sometimes there's still a gap there because that's just not in our wheelhouse, exactly like that. And so for us to think our best of another person, to do our best for or toward or in relationship with another person, and then to trust God for the rest of it, sure does make for a, a more cheerful giver, a more cheerful lover of people and of God. And by people, I, I include, again, ourselves. This is why. Because the way you and I love ourselves and love one another, not just the easy ones, not just the ones we like, we love then grows beyond us Be, think about this how i love myself uh, and by that i mean being tender and forgiving and supportive but also holding accountable um companioning watching over um, really sharing uh, life that's a selfless and a beneficial always looking for the greater good kind of love so when I love myself that way then it impacts the way I build relationships the way I love you and the way I love you will also impact the way you love yourself and not just the two of us but it will impact the way we build all relationships it'll it'll impact the way we shape our households 
it will then, because it has shaped household after household, will also shape uh, families and circles of friends. The way we uh, walk with one another on a regular basis and the way we are in the world together based on love, wrapped in love, immersed in love, will make a difference in the world in which we are walking. Love is not just about two people, a, a bride or a groom, a friend and a friend, a parent and a child. All of those are different expressions, but they're even bigger than uh, we are tempted to define love and they have a much farther reaching impact. The way you are a friend, the way you parent, the way you love your spouse, your partner, the way you love yourself can change this world. Let's be intent, my friends, on thinking the best of one another, including ourselves. Uh, let's do our best. Let's be our best in relationship with one another so that our love is true and deep. And knowing that we don't have all that we need to love in the widest definition of love another person, that God will take care of the gaps. It is the intent of our heart to think the best of others and do the best for ourselves and we are changing the world. I'm so glad that we could uh, talk a little bit about this larger experience of the word love. I don't know that it's definable. Paul did a great job with all the love is and the love isn'ts. We know that, we feel it when it's missing, we feel it when it's present. May the world feel that love is in their face when we are present with them. Not because we're overbearing, but because we think the best of one another, that we are our best with one another, and that we allow room for the God of the universe, the one who is love, to be present with us even in traffic, especially in line with the slow clerk. Oh, love is tricky and love is glorious. May you feel it, know it in a deeper way today. Oh, it makes us, makes it possible for us to do exactly what we're about to do. I hear you, Janice. Janice is having some surgery today and she's trusting herself with us as far as prayer goes. And so our prayer is for peace for you, Janice, but also uh, wisdom and skill um, for that surgery to go well uh, and for uh, surgeons and technicians and nurses to be mindful uh, and for your spirit to be alive and allowed to move in that place. Think your best of the other and think the best of yourself. Do your best for yourself and for everyone else that you meet. And let's watch what love does. Lord God, we are so grateful for how you love us. Oh, were it up to us, I don't know of a person as good as many I know. I don't know of a person who would think to do what you did for us in Jesus the Christ. And I don't know of many who would give up what Jesus did just to walk among us this way. In your fullness, God, you have loved us so tremendously well. And you don't give up doing the same tomorrow, even when we have been ignorant or negligent of you in this day. Thank you for never giving up on us. 
thank you that you are love and that you are trusting us to be that kind of um, example, that kind of touch point, that kind of presence in the world for others who don't know what love is, who oh, is, is overwhelming because we know how short we fall. We know how big the challenge is to love this world. Help us begin with these simple steps and may they become easier every day that we would think the best of the other because we think the best of ourselves, honestly. <sighs> and then help us put our muscle where our mouth is, that we would do our very best for ourselves and for one another. Again, God, thank you so much for loving us. Help us to be love for the world because you live within us because we belong to you. It is in the name of love himself, Jesus the Christ, that we pray. Amen. Friends, it's been good to be with you this morning. Prayers for uh, peace, um, for rest for those who need it, for uh, meaningful work for those who need that. And again, prayers for our friend Janice. Can't wait to hear the good news, friend. Love to you all. Bye.